Air Transit projects. But my understanding is that the Ottawa's position is that the 4.8 billion also includes uh, money previously allocated for the Scarborough subway extension of about 660 million dollars. So isn't there substantially less left over for the uh, four priority projects? As you know, uh, the commitment to the Scarborough subway made by the federal government was a pre-existing commitment that preceded any of these particular funds that are uh, being allocated today. And so it is our position that uh, these monies uh, for the Scarborough subway are not included in the phase two. And as I indicated, uh, today is the beginning of, an, of another series of negotiations involving the governments. And our position will continue to be that uh, this project should not be financed from those funds. And we'll see where we end up. But the bottom line is this, there's billions of new dollars any way you cut it, for new projects going forward uh, today uh, that are our priority projects, the Relief Line, Smart Track, Waterfront, and Scarborough East LRT. And we will be moving forward with those projects the first time that we've had a transit network plan that we're moving forward with. We now have the historic funding from the Government of Canada, and we're moving forward with all of those, including the Bloor Danforth subway extension. This is a historic day for Toronto that we actually have this active, substantial participation from the Government of Canada in these projects that look out not just two weeks or two months, but many years, and get on with the, the job. And how will the city fund its share of the <coughs> Well, I, I can't answer that question as yet, as you know. Um, we, in good faith, and I say we, I initiated, with the support of the provincial government initially, uh, the prospect of putting on uh, tolls on our roads, two of our roads, uh, to finance this, and it would have produced a substantial sum of money, certainly more than anything that's being produced now by these other governments to help us. We would have done it on our own and been accountable for it. Uh, the provincial government chose, for a variety of reasons I spoke about yesterday, to strike that down and, and prohibit that. And uh, so I can only say that we have to, obviously, we, now, I will say, we do have uh, in partial uh, make up for that, the money that is going to come by way of additional uh, gasoline taxes from the province of Ontario, but there's still a gap between that and what would have been produced by the road tolls, and we have uh, our work cut out for us in terms of identifying and reaching another consensus, I say another consensus beyond the one that we did reach on road tolls, an overwhelming consensus as to how we'll do that. But I take that on board because, uh, as I say, we've got to build transit and we have to come up with our share and we will do that. What are the odds you're going to get this money from the province? I mean, now you're not even asking for 33%, you want 40%. What does that look like and what kind of answer do you think you're going to get? Because lately it seems they're saying we've been giving Toronto a ton of money for TTC. First of all, the 40% number was not one that I made up. It was a number that was adopted unanimously by the big city mayors from across Canada as a standard that should be uh, complied with or should be followed um, in all of these arrangements. So it would be 40% federal, 40% provincial, whichever province, and 20% municipal. And that is meant simply to reflect the ability or inability, as the case may be, of the different orders of government to raise money. We are reliant upon, as you know, the property taxes, and it is not fair or reasonable to expect that we're going to be able to come up with billions of dollars for these huge capital projects out of the property taxes alone, whereas the other governments have other sources of money. With respect to your question of, you know, sort of what happens if they don't or, or that sort of thing, I would only say this. I would be astounded. I would be astounded if the government of Ontario, especially facing an election, but even if they weren't, left billions of dollars on the table, which is what they'll do when the federal government says you must match this to a minimum of 33%. If the government of Ontario says no, I'm assuming the federal government will say, well, I'm terribly sorry, you haven't met the qualifications. And I'd be astounded if any government of Ontario did that, which is why I've said, why don't they come forward now and say, yes, we'll be there to match, we'll sort out the details, but we're going to be there. And that's all I've ever asked them to say. Sorry, do you now, though, have to have a discussion that council about revenue tools or raising taxes in an election year because of this announcement today? I will say that beyond the money that did come from the fuel tax that was the new fuel tax money, which is about $170 million when it's fully phased in, yes, we have to have a discussion as to where we're going to come up with the rest of our share. Uh, we do have that infrastructure levy in place, so that will produce some money, but we have to come up with it. We have to have a discussion as to where the rest of our share is going to come from, and I'm prepared to undertake having that discussion. Uh, we're trying to sort through that right now. We spent painstaking hours coming up with the best answer as being road tolls and we were encouraged to do so and then we were sort of slapped down on that. So now we have to sort of, uh, you know, go back to the drawing board and we have some time in the coming months to do that. Let's remember as well, these monies that are talked about today will be flowed over quite a long period of time. Some of the construction projects they will finance are, you know, 14, 15 years out in terms of the requirement to have all that money on hand. And so, um, you know, so we have, we don't have 14 years to sort that out, but it is something where we have to come up with a cash flow of our own that, that uh, produces a revenue stream uh, to uh, finance our share in addition to what we already have. Uh, over time. And so I would say 
you know, we have a whole variety of things we could look at, obviously. Last question. Yeah. You said that you have a lot of options to look at, but out of the last list, there seemed to be only about three that would, that would fly. You came down to doing things like the short term. You're right. The choice of words have a lot. I mean, in terms of those that are viable, for example, as you've heard me say before, there is this uh, alcohol tax that we're permitted under the City of Toronto Act to put on, except when you actually look at the, the feasibility of it, largely governed by what the province tells us they will or won't do, um, it becomes kind of a non-starter. If you just pick that one. Uh, so that's on the list. So there are a lot that are on the list, but when you actually go down to ask the province, well, would you, for example, allow us to put a dollar in each bottle of liquor and wine at the liquor store? And they say, no, we won't. Then, you know, and, and then if you said, well, would you collect for us and could you remit to us, uh, you know, 50 cents put on every drink sold in the bar, they say, well, no, we can't do that. So you start saying, well, then how are we to levy a tax on alcohol if you wanted to do that? So it's not a huge list, but look, the bottom line is I recognize our responsibility. And I think, frankly, the people of the city of Toronto recognize, as they did, I thought the reaction to road tolls was very interesting. You know, you didn't have their people rising up as one and saying, we're, we're not going to pay this, this is a very bad thing. There were people who were opposed to it, but there were an awful lot of people who said, to me personally, who wrote emails to my office and so on and said, you know what, we recognize the fact that we have to pay for transit, it's not free, and that we have to pay our share as residents of the City of Toronto, and you know, while we mightn't like any particular way you're going to ask us to pay for it, that we recognize that if we want the transit to fix the traffic, we have to do something. And so I think the honesty of what we as a council did in that instance was welcomed by people, so we're just going to have to go back to the drawing board, but I agree that maybe the actual list of viable options is not a lot, but it's certainly more than one. So should Torontonians be expecting some citywide tax? Torontonians should expect that I'm going to be honest with them, as I was on road tolls, and I said I would to you. I told you months before that I took on board the responsibility of having to come forward as mayor and to then try and encourage my council colleagues to support some way of paying for our share. And I take on board the, the, that I have that responsibility. And so we'll just have to do the work necessary to do the analysis, as we did on road tolls, and kind of start over again because the province left us high and dry, and figure out a way in which we can do this. And I will take that on board. That's my responsibility. Mr. Last Mr. question Mayor, to Jamie. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the antics in the, the last council chamber have reached a, a new level. We saw, we've seen that behavior before, but now we have one councillor looming with a threat of a legal threat against another councillor, and they're both legally fees are going to be paid by the city. Are you disappointed the way that some of the councillors are, are behaving up there? Yes, uh, because I think that, uh, you know, these kinds of places, uh, the legislature, uh, the city council, parliament are serious places for serious business to be done. And, uh, you know, you'd like to hope that uh, certainly it never devolves to the point where you get lawsuits involved. But even the kind of debate that happens, and I admit occasionally I get my passions up a bit, especially when it comes to sort of fighting for Toronto and people calling on my own motivations into question. But having said all that, um, you know, it's a group of people who have strong feelings about a lot of things and they have strong feelings in particular about what's said about them uh, and I just hope we can minimize that going forward especially in this year they told me when I got here you, you you all know I'm a relative newcomer to this place I've never for example been through the cycle leading up to an election and they all said to me oh wait and see you know the place changes when you get kind of a year and a half away from the election well indeed those people were correct in their um, in their uh, in their uh, you know recounting of history to me and I just hope we can continue to do what I think we've done quite well the last couple of years uh, since I've been here and since the council changed which is that we've by and large reached consensus on many important issues and had good solid votes in favor of things you know so they're not kind of one vote squeakers there's been a couple of those but mostly we've had good solid votes in, in favor of people saying we're doing the right thing um, and I think that uh, that result that uh, that that's uh, respond reflective of a consensus and I hope that uh, continues and I hope that the behavior that goes with it is the same I think you'll find this afternoon when we deal with in the public part of the dealing with the uh, parking authority thing that we will have uh, we will have reached such a consensus on the right thing to do in order to maintain uh, public confidence. I'll be proposing some things uh, this afternoon that uh, I think will cause the public to say, you know what, I think they're doing the right thing here in terms of responding to uh, reports that we've uh, seen. So uh, I just hope we'll continue with that. And I think, you know, in my case, I view that as the right way to do things. Even when it was uh, came to something like the pride issue, I said the Toronto way we do things is we sit down and if there are disagreements or difficulties or issues, we sort them out and we talk to each other and so on. And that is very much how I believe all of life should work. And and I know that's an optimistic view, but if you can't be optimistic, then you shouldn't be in this business. And so, uh, so I hope it uh, you know continues to be okay most of the time, and with as few of these uh, aberrations as possible. Thank you very much.